We back for another Wooten Brother review of Raw and SmackDown. Yeah! That was my preacher pastor intro. Tell me how you like it. Comment below. So welcome to West Dash. Look how I broke that quick. <laughs> Look, welcome to Wrestling with My Brother, the SmackDown vs. Raw show, where we'll be giving... <laughs> A uh, honest commentary on how we feel about it. Uh, and which show run one? Ultimately, you know, more of a fact is I still believe that it was better back in the day. He still believes that today is better for reasons I still don't know. We'll get into the quality of matches. That. That's it. Uh, yeah, but I, you know, it's not really about the quality. I, I, I could, I could care less. Most I loved the backstage commentary. I haven't seen anybody go backstage and fight. Really not in a while. Like, Braun did his whole because little it was, segment where he beat the crap out of everybody. And then, I'm not done with Roman Reigns, where they had to do it five different segments long. I want to see some honest, stone cold, The Rock. But again, I get it. They're, they're, they're gone. They're not there anymore. I'm moving on. But then you got the lunatic fringe who can't seem to get one segment to make, like, to make me laugh. He's so corny. He is, he, he, you know he's corny. You know he's corny as hell. God, I hate that guy right now. I, you're coming at me like I'm a, a Dean Ambrose fan. He is a Dean Ambrose fan. I'm he not. He bed in his little Dean Ambrose pajamas. He takes his little hands like Dean Ambrose. He gets in bed and he gives his wife the dirty deeds. We ain't got to see that crap. Anyway, let's kick it off. So, watching Raw was uh, eh, so-so this week. I mean... You're sitting here watching uh, what I believe started off was Kurt Angle coming out with his You Suck, You Suck, which is still awesome, by the way. And then you have the, I want to say stroke victim, Braun Strowman. And I say that because Braun, his face just keeps shaking and I don't understand what that's about. And he comes out and just pretty much gives his whole spiel that he... Is the number one contender? He should be the number one contender for the Universal title against uh, Brock Lesnar because he's beaten Roman Reigns and he can beat Samoa Joe and he beat up Samoa Joe. You're not going to chime in at any point here? I'm not just doing all the talking? I'm not finished with you yet! See? And there it is. I think he was waiting for that. I saw it come in his bright rosy cheeks. Roman Reigns is garbage and now you are too. Trash. And then Samoa Joe, which, you know what? Samoa Joe is is steadily rising. I was clowning him. He's the man. I was I don't know clowning what the hell out of him earlier. But now, I, I'm i kind of digging his spiel. He is, again, I <clears> said <throat> it before, he is a Taz slash... I need to cough drop. Rikishi hybrid. But he's actually doing it for me. I just hate when he gets all close and personal. I'm going to... I'm going to... Get you. Paul Heyman looked like he was like... <laughs> my hands around your throat. He thought he was going to get kissed and he got scared. And it's going to tighten really, really hard. But while it's tightening, don't pay attention to the erection I have in my pants. I felt that was what was coming from him at some point. And it was weird. It was He's kind of. He kind of reminds me of... Uh, uh, the Gimp. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, where there's two fuckers, then here it comes. Can I keep saying the word? You know, we, we can't beep it out. We don't got the budget. We've discussed this. You've got Roman Reigns, and he comes out with his... What is this, by the way? Why does he inch his arm so inside? <laughs> it does this. It's a... Uh, it's a... It's a... Uh, it's, a it's a Samoan tribal... Uh, ah... I'm completely lying. I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know say, what message. the hell that is. Uh, and so he comes in, does his spiel, and they pretend that they're gonna fight. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad though. I liked how. Uh, I actually, I, I, I dig it. It started off pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Braun was talking, it. and then Roman's like, "Man, Man shut up. up!" He he <laughs> actually gained some respect in my book because I. It looked like a slap, but it was actually... It was like a, it was a chop. It was an underthrow, like, cane coin chop. Well, I think The Undertaker started doing that before anybody else ever should really... But I think The Undertaker started doing that. I mean, it came before Kane, so... Yeah, I think The Undertaker started doing that. It's that underthrow chop. 
and I uh, got a good hit on him, and then they beat the hell out of Braun Strowman into the out of the ring, and then you know they 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 rumbled, they tussled, they fussled. And they emptied the locker room again to break them up. Where well, because you got to break up all three of them now. Where it wasn't like it was just Brock <laughs> and uh, Joe before. You got all three of them. Yeah, all three y'all had so to they, get broken up. That was nice. You know, even though they got broken up, you see Roman Reigns on the ground yet again for Braun Strowman. Just take don't fight fear. Just take a bat, catch him while he's sleeping, and whip. He didn't fight fair. He, he hit him on the ambulance. He, that, was pretty, yeah, that was pretty fucking funny. That's well, you throw me over an ambulance. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna tempted manslaughter. I probably would do the same yeah. thing. I, uh, I probably would have hit him with the whole damn car. Uh, he probably could have taken it. He probably couldn't. But you know, we'll let time tell on that one. But you know, uh, how I know K Fab is dead. <laughs> was that? This was like even in like '06 when uh, they did that whole thing where Vince McMahon's car blew up. They had, like, people calling 911 saying, like, oh, my God, Vince McMahon just blew up in his car. And, like, ambulance were going to show up and whatnot. Nobody, like, batted an eye. I feel like there was, like, no reports of, like, no. somebody believing this really happened and no. called 911. No. We knew they did the little switcheroo or Braun Strowman got out somewhere between that and then. Oh, no. It was, uh, apparently, it was, like, pre-recorded. Ah. So. <sighs> Anyway, I mean, if there's no near-death situation, what is wrestling? Uh, so that kind of leads into the ongoing feud between Finn Balor and my man Elias Samson. Elias Samson can sing a damn good song. The Drifter. It warms my heart. Running down my good, basically, hometown of Washington, D.C. He said it was depressing. <laughs> it is. It is. That's why I moved. It is. It is highly depressing. Yeah. Uh, again, it's Finn Balor. There's no, there's, there's nothing you can say about Finn Balor. His boy can take a hit and he can give an ass whooping. He did pull off the coup de gras, which was beautiful, until it was interrupted by the f- fat man named uh, I keep I keep forgetting the eater the name. of worlds. The eater of worlds. There you go. Well, the 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 hick that is so nicely dressed. You know, I can't get that. At least the Undertaker used to come in. He used to come in in what his purple. Paul Berry, like, big gloves, and then that shredded up, you know, whatever whole entire leotard thing he had. I am angry that Bray Wyatt is supposed to be a redneck, but he's a redneck with fashion sense. He's not a redneck. He's a redneck. No, he's Didn't a... he have a house in the woods? He's... Man, he's Any a... person has a move called Sister Abigail is not... Is not is, is, they're a redneck. That's a redneck move. He's, no, his stick man. is a redneck. So what is he? It's, his stick is not a redneck. His stick is a redneck. No, he's a cult leader. He's a, he's a cult leader from the rednecks. He's a cult leader from the South. I'm just saying. Doesn't I'm mean he's a redneck. Uh, uh, he's from the Outwoods. You, know like you, you know what? You know what? How you know that Bray Wyatt isn't from like Tennessee? And you know what? He was just like, you know what? I'm gonna get all these people, and I'm gonna have them join me because I'm I'm gonna manipulate them. And instead of I'm not a redneck, I, I'm a, I'm a city slicker. I actually listen to like Three Six Mafia. Does he? Uh, there's no truth in that, so. But I you had to ask Duzzy, so you I, know it's I just, possible. I just said Duzzy because I wanted to know. But anyway, it's possible. He's trying to be creepy. He's he did his. If everybody has, if you have not seen The Exorcist, he pulled that Exorcist move where the girl, you know, walked down the stairs backwards on like you know her hands. Uh, he pulled that move Spider and tried walk. to look. Yeah, tried to look creepy. It was just like. No. Stop. It was creepy the first time he did it, like three years ago. It's just, Maybe no. four. But stop. I hate his shtick. I'm I'm happy to see this. I, I like where this could head. If it's done right. I'm hoping that the Wyatt family end up back together and back on Raw. Because that'll be cool. I haven't seen the Wyatt family really, so uh but that whole entire I hate I'm I'm still not digging his shtick. But anyway, Finn Balor ends up losing that fight because he gets Sister Abigail, and then, you know, Elias Samson goes for the pin. So I can't knock Elias Samson. That guy is just awesome. And, you know, that's about it for that one. Uh, was it? Oh, Kaz and Enzo. I'm going to give that match the amount of attention it deserves. So after that, we had Nia Jax and Emma. And uh, this was not on the Hulu version. Hmm. So Nia didn't see it. But it's Nia Jax. I know she whooped ass. She has this new... Uh, it's 
it's not a moon salt. It's like a forward flip senton. Just like standing. It looks cool. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So like she basically just stands there, flips over, and lands on top hmm. of her opponent. I'll have to YouTube this. That was cool. I liked that. Huh. Yeah, it was cool to see her add something new to the arsenal. She won this one? Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course. It's, it's Nia Jax. Oh, and the, what preceded this was Emma was uh, complaining to Kurt. She's like, oh, I started this whole women's revolution thing, and I don't get any attention. I don't get any love. And he's like, all right. Or actually, no. Then she goes, maybe I'll get uh, some attention if I start dating your new son. And Kurt's like, oh, all right. You want a match? Fine. Double you got it. A wonder. With <laughs> Nia Jax. And she wasn't happy about that. You, you, watch, fam- you watch Family Guy, right? I do watch Family Guy. You know that uh, My Black Son? Oh, sketch why do I know that where it's like Peter and uh, he adopts some black kid and the <laughs> golf course black son. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. it's been a while since I've seen that one but I think I remember what you're talking about that, somebody made a meme of that with Kurt Angle and Jason Jordan that's funny as hell anyway I mean it goes in proceeding that it's uh, after that I believe it was Bailey and Sasha Banks doing their whole Thing for the number one contender to face Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. I was so bored in that match. I I can't really comment on that one. It was just a typical. It's like a mediocre fight. Like it wasn't really interesting to watch for me. They're two friends who were faced to do forced to do battle, and then you got Alexa Bliss commenting on the side, and her comments are like, "Yo, shut up before I slap you." That's it. Uh, I have the exact opposite opinion of this. Oh. I think the match wasn't too bad. It was it was one of the better matches of the night. Uh, Alexa Bliss actually didn't seem to say too much on commentary. She she said just enough to anger me, which was probably like five words because yeah. she barely spoke. There it is. But the match wasn't bad. The finish was. I haven't seen something like that in a while where it was a leverage pin, uh, but. They I both was, went after it. I thought it was a pretty good I match. Was so bored, so I, I I just fell out of that match real quick. You don't like either of them, so yeah, no. You so, don't like you. You're not a you're you're not the guy that goes to the uh, May Young Classic and chants women's wrestling. I no no that's, that's no not you. no no. That's not you. I you even chant. walked out early. I did chant for the pirate wheel girl. I just don't remember her name. She was, Kyrie Sane. Thank you. She was awesome. <laughs> Ahoy! <laughs> that better start. Uh, and I did, I did, I did go for uh, Ivan Drago's uh, female Jazzy. counterpart, Jazzy. She was, she was, she need, if, if she came to WWE, I would watch every match of hers because she's just got potential. She would be this generation's China. I, I see it. Wouldn't I go that see far. it. I would. I would go that far. Except she might not do a sex tape. Knowing what happened to, to, well, she might not do porn overall. Like she wouldn't do a whole, just one sex tape with X Pac, which I did see. It. it was weird. And then you know, and China was like on the dance. Like so. Two, next up, we had uh, Jason Jordan versus Kurt Hawkins. Also, Kurt Hawkins was gonna say he was gonna face the facts. Gonna give that also the attention it deserves. Uh, yeah, so Kurt Angle's black son picks up the win, and <laughs> it was just, it, it was, it, it, it was just to build up Jason Jordan, and oh, I don't like, see that they... Kurt Hawkins hasn't had a win on television since he's returned, uh, like a year yeah. ago. I don't see, I don't see Jason Jordan taking off for the reason that he, he's gonna try and imitate Kurt... Obviously, he did the whole, I'm going to pull both No, he's been doing now. that. Oh, he's yeah, still imitating Kurt. And I just I just don't see it out of his character with that stupid... I, I, uh, he's going to have to do work on himself. Like He's going to have to find a niche and really dig down into that niche to make people actually like him. Because forcing us to believe that he's Kurt Angle's mulatto gelato son is just a lit. It's not, it's not going to help him. It, it just, it, it's not going to give him a boost in my mind. All right, so I'm going to give the opinion of... Uh... You know, the guy who watched him in NXT. Ah. We already like Jason Jordan. I don't. I, he didn't watch he him in NXT. He has to get my love. I know. He's he, there, the American Alpha, a bunch of fake-ass rockers. Let me, let me get... Rockers? It was about... It, 
No, they're more like the Steiner brothers. I'll give you that, yes, they're more like Steiner brothers. Anyways, we already love Jason Jordan. No, we don't. Not you. Okay. Don't say we, just say I. Then I'm talking about the fans who watched it in NXT. Okay, say the fans, but not. Like, you can't just say we. We, I'm... not including Naj. Thank you. Already like Jason Jordan. We loved American Alpha. No, we didn't. Not including Naj. Thank you. God, we does not include you. I'm just, on. don't, de- what? Okay. Okay. And one, I don't think we were ready for American Alpha to break up because it wasn't needed. They just needed to be used. Two, this isn't like 1985. We're not going to believe that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. So... It's got to be something real compelling, real interesting. Jason Jordan's got to up the ante. Kurt Angle's got to... I think Kurt Angle's doing fine, actually. Jason Jordan's got to up the ante. The storyline has to be written better. And that's how we'll care. I mean, you said a lot more words than I thought you would about that. Honestly, I... I'm upset by it. I'm still giving that the attention it deserves. I'm also upset by Enzo and Cass, but... Oh, I'm so upset because it, it failed so miserably. It, it was like it brought you back to watching. It's it's like why, but you know they could at least let Enzo do something cool, like just get a damn chair, beat him. Like I'm saying, beat the hell out of him. Get him back. Attack. Get him backstage. Throw water in his eyes. The hell, throw throw Kool Aid in his eyes. We know that shit is sugary as hell. It stings. Lead pipes. Do something. Act Brooklyn. Act New York. Do he's, something. He's from Jersey. Oh God. Yeah, do what Jersey do, like take a gun or hit him with a brick or something, but just do something, please. It it was like watching a. It was, I can't even describe it. He it? should put him in, like, the waters of Newark. Oh. <laughs> come out with damn drug addiction. Castle come out, like, 20 feet tall. <laughs> just turn into mutant. You would turn into something else. That is not even... That's like sludge at this point. Yeah. But watching that match is just freaking horrible. The um, match? Yeah. No, I'm not going to say oh, okay. about it. Uh, so next we had the club versus the revival. Uh, this also was not on Hulu, but a short synopsis. The club basically turned face here. Uh, the Hardys came in trying to give the distraction. And the revival picked up the win. It, it didn't make sense that they were turning face because it doesn't make sense. It's confusing. It wasn't well... It wasn't established either earlier. It wasn't established really at all. Uh, and the only reason why I think they might be doing this is so that the club can join back up with Finn Balor. And they can have the club versus the White family. Hmm. Or the Mishtaraj. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Bray's already facing Finn. Oh, true, true. Okay. I mean, and that leads into the next match, which is uh, Dean Ambrose, Seth freaking Rollins versus the Mishtaraj. And I I, want to slap myself when it comes to the Mishtaraj. It's just dumb. Uh, So why'd you say it? feel so dirty saying that it's so stupid anyway so now uh what's this to uh axel and uh bo bo dallas now they really don't even have intro music they just come out with the awesome uh and the nazi haircut precedes him and he's you know doing his usual shtick uh i'm just glad his wife didn't get into any part of this match because that was getting old really fast thank god but it was actually a good performance by Seth freaking Rollins. I actually liked watching everything he did. I hate watching Dean Ambrose. His his moves, his his fake punches, they look terrible. Like, I could do a better fake punch than that because this is just like, uh, 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 uh. And it just looks that bad. His baseball slot, like, all of that just looks terrible. Somebody's going to have to talk to that boy and get his antics up. I probably have said this before on the show, but Dan sucks in my mind. There's no, there's nothing lunatic about him. Nothing. I feel like if there wasn't that whole lunatic stigma, 
thing around him, then you wouldn't have a problem with him. I wouldn't have a problem, but they keep hyping him up as he's a crazy man who does whatever he wants. No, I don't believe that. Yeah, I think uh, me and Bunny Slippers are crazier than that. Uh, okay. I believe that Dean's probably gonna turn heel after this. I'm hoping he's probably not. They're probably gonna make Seth turn heel again, which I wouldn't be mad at. But still, I I'm hoping Dean turns heel after this because he needs that. He needs to be able to. Needs run wild, hit people with chairs. Because you know what? He was crazy beforehand. It would be better if Dean was just like that crazy flyer that actually flew between SmackDown and Raw and he just like just did whatever he wanted, interrupt the matches. Just, I'm Dean freaking Ambrose. You want to fire me? You can't fire me. I'll show up every match and I'll beat the hell out of anybody. He just shows up in random matches and beat the hell out of somebody. That would be a better shtick. That's a lot of driving. It's a billion dollar industry. They could do what they want. See what I'm saying? They can do what they want. Yeah, but, but they... give the fans what they want. They don't pay for his flights or traveling, so... Oh, well, he's, he makes money, so it's okay. He can just catch a flight. Anyway, so... And it, it ended up uh, a win for Dean Ambrose and Seth freaking Rollins. They actually pulled out a decent match. Uh, it was cool that they teased... Uh, well, they didn't really tease it too much, but the... The suicide dive that they did, it was all back to the old Shield days, and even at the end of the match, they, Seth went for the the Hounds of Justice pound, but Dean didn't want to. He didn't. Dean wasn't feeling it. it. Which I'm hoping that develops into more of a we're gonna have a just all out free for all battle and see you know, and for me to say I'm sorry and he cries while they beat each other up and I see tears, but I ain't gonna get what I hope. And that's, that's it for Raw. It wasn't really that interesting, honestly. I didn't find it that, that interesting. Except for the first round, which was just like Kurt Angle, Braun, and um, uh, Samoa Joe. That's the only thing I actually found interesting, really, from like watching Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I uh, started really into it. And then it was pretty much the Bailey match where it kind of hit that decline for me. And I, I really wanted Sasha to win. I thought it just made sense. So I was a little frustrated by that. I fell asleep after that. <coughs> and then upon watching it the next day, struggled. And I'm going to be honest, I fell asleep during the Seth and Dean match. Uh, my first time watching it. The second time I watched it and... It, you weren't missing out. Yeah, it didn't really do it for me. Nah. It. It wasn't a bad match, but I was kind of hoping for like a Dean heel turn or just something. I give some whole, button on it. I give the whole night like a, an X Pac rating. Like it is, a, it is, it is not that great in my mind. Uh, I wouldn't give it an X Pac. I'd give it a Shamrock. Mm, solid C, huh? But I give it an X Pac. It was just what that great. And for those of you who are just now catching us for the first time. Uh, we do have a rating system here. If I had more time, I'd probably throw up a graphic, but I don't, so I'm going to talk to you about it. Uh, a is the Stone Cold. A B is your Daniel Bryan. C is the Ken Shamrock. D is the X Pac. What is the F, Naj? Oh, you're not going to say Bret the Hitman Hart. Oh, it's <laughs> Bret Hart. <laughs> I thought we changed that. All right, so it's Bret the Hitman Hart, which. You know what? He was my hero back in the day, but then Owen came on the scene and it was a little bit better. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about it. So, <laughs> I, I feel like people are going to get mad by that, but... What, Owen? No, that Brett is the F. He, people are going to get mad about that, but he used to give his glasses out, man. He was such a hero. Until, I mean, I can respect him. Until he had to leave. It's a troll. To, uh, 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 some, you know, a screw-over. But I just, I just don't think he's that great. He was that great. He's the best there is. No, the best there was the best. Anybody with that slogan is that great. Let it go. So when Natalia says it. Well, Natalia says it, but it's like you're. You said anyone with that slogan. No, she she's trying to be Brett. You said anyone with that slogan. But she looks like Jim Nyhart. You said anyone with that slogan. Working for me. Well, 
And she's not the best because her body is like not even coke bottle shaped. It's like a well, disease. guess wow. what? Wow, it's not. Guess attractive. what? What's up? We are not <laughs> judging the women on their body shapes. We are judging them I on their wrestling it. abilities. This is a review. This is my and opinion. you know what? How dare you censor me, sir? I'm not censoring you. I'm just telling you one, you're wrong, and two, I think Natalia is a very attractive woman. Ah, like paper bag it. Well, I mean, the fan of the opera mask. I'm a fan of the opera mask. It. Um, so this goes in uh, the SmackDown. Let's get back on track. Yeah? You are so wrong. I am wrong on so many levels. That's what Mama said as soon as it came out. So on the SmackDown, it was actually a good night. And the only reason why, in my opinion, is because the man is back himself. And the real comedy of the show is back. So I expect to see some better backstage, you know, commentary scenes, little cut clips, whatever. I expect to see it because the man, Chris Jericho, came back and it was just awesome. It was just awesome. Don't expect to see too much. I don't think he's staying for too long. I hope so, but it's, he looks bad, though. Like his, he, he's like, He just got off tour. He, just, he looks like he gained some serious weight, though. He just got off tour. He needs, I think his tour like ended like last week. He needs the Oh, gosh. Chris, you should have not been eating the burgers, boy. Oof. I actually have a friend who served him uh, at a restaurant she works at out in West Virginia after they did the show. Mm. And I was like, what did he get? Because, you know, I just wanted to know, like, mm. is he, like, sticking to his diet? Because I want to know if he's coming back. He got like fried chicken. Oh. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's almost his time is done. Well, he looks slower than he once was. So, I mean, I would like to see him, you know, stay on the show as a manager or something like that. Nah, he's he... still got plenty of go in him. Well, if I mean, if he does, I mean, if he's still going to continue with wrestling. I mean, not everybody wants to continue all the time. I mean, I, mean, he he would, I don't think he would have came back if he's not trying to keep going. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Because he's, he's got a rock band that's touring the country. I'm pretty sure he's... He can do without wrestling, but I think it's. He loves That's what I'm saying. If he was just gonna, you know, take the step back from wrestling, come back whenever you know, you like WrestleMania or something like that, once in a while. Uh, I wouldn't want to see that. I would want to see him work full time, or at least like six month schedules. But I wouldn't want to see Chris Jericho coming as the part timer because he's never done that. Mm. And I want, I don't want him like on a Brock schedule. I don't want him like. And don't get me wrong. I don't want that either. I don't want that either. He's like the last person who really brings and makes me laugh every time I see him. He every doesn't. Time. He wouldn't work well in that capacity because Chris Jericho, you know, as amazing as he is in ring, it's also the backstage segments. It's the opening promos. It's the closing promos, it's the videos, it's the packages, it's all that, the highlight reel. So, if he's not there, you take all of that away. And that's half of his charm. That is true, too. So, he's just somebody who wouldn't work in that capacity, and I think he knows that. I hope he doesn't, I really hope he doesn't. But he didn't seem like he was too slow or too... He just Big. seemed a little slow. But we'll get to that. Because it, it's some rain rust. Night. That's all. But, you know, Kevin Owens comes out and talks about, who hey, I have won it back in him and his ridiculous nose. And he comes out and does his whole, I am the greatest shtick. And we already knew AJ Styles was going to come out. But to, to get the surprise of Chris Jericho, that was awesome. So Shane McMahon announces there's going to be a triple threat match tonight. For the American title, which that title is just passing around like a two dollar hooker, like it's the U.S. title, the U.S. title. I'm sorry, what did I say? What you said the American title? The American title. The, the American title. title is the two dollar hooker's version of that. Okay, well yeah. this this title is getting passed around. Somebody better wipe that down because somebody gonna get herpes. Um, just saying that they're kissing it all the time like they do. Usher doesn't have the belt. That's cold. That's so cold. That's so cold. So we get a uh, battleground rematch. <laughs> That's horrible. That's so horrible. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's so wrong. So many levels for Usher. Listen, Usher can't keep track of where his lips got to go. He'll confess it later That's on, horrible. But he can't keep track of what he does. He'll confess about it. Damn. At least that's, he owns up. That's horrible. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we had a uh, the first Battleground rematch, which was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Baron Corbin. 
This was a better match than the one at Battleground. It was a better match than the one at Battleground. You see 110% from Shinsuke Nakamura, but again, I don't care about this big overgrown bully, Baron. I, I, I honestly don't care about his character. If. He, he His hair, everything angers me, and... I'm glad he lost. I'm glad Shinsuke gave him that Kinshasa right to the... Well, it wasn't the... Yeah, it's Kinshasa right to the back of the head. I mean, he could have actually closed his eyes, but you see him on the mat just... Yeah, that bothered <laughs> me too. I was like, wait a minute, man. Let this be a little believable. Let this be a little believable. We know it wasn't that hard, but give me something. I, I definitely know you could have acted like you was unconscious, but he didn't do that. So it, uh, it kind of ruined the end of that match for me. But overall, I mean, it's a Shinsuke Nakamura match. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be some great moves. I just wish they would actually take those two backstage. I want to see Shinsuke actually like jump off something backstage and just you know knee somebody in the face or something like that. I I want to see him to death, but you know I don't want somebody to actually die. Uh, decent match. Your thoughts? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, it was better than the uh, battleground match. So I've really got no complaints with it. Um, Shinsuke won. Which needed to happen, and we later find out that Shinsuke is going to be facing Cena next week, which is a dream match. Oh, let's cut to that. Jinder Mahal and his overgrown freaking nose had they had to come out and do this thing. I'm so glad the Singh brothers are probably hurt in the hospital somewhere. They're <laughs> after, fine. After Randy Orton knocked they, his ass off, I would feel they posted a picture on Instagram. They're oh, fine. Okay. Uh, so, Jinder Mahal comes out and does his whole Mother Day Maharaja. We all knew where this was heading. We all knew as soon as John Cena came back, it was going to lead into this. Because I, everybody was getting tired of Randy Orton and this whole Jinder Mahal thing they had going on here. Everybody was hating that. So, we all knew as soon as John Cena came back, this is what was going to happen. But, did not expect the Shinsuke Nakamura and John Cena head-to-head which I'm actually going to want to watch. Yeah, I was not expecting that at all. That came out of left field. I'm excited for that match. That's going to be a good one. Hopefully... Uh, if John Cena can get better acting skills. Hopefully it's not, you know, stifled because it's not a pay-per-view match. Because it's a paper, it's a, that's like a WrestleMania headliner match. But hopefully it's not stifled because it's not a pay-per-view match. And... I pray. I I can't even say that. Probably what's gonna happen is Baron's gonna end up costing the match, and Cena's gonna win by DQ. And I see. Face I already gender. see that too. It's gonna be. It's gonna be everyone's hero, John Cena. He's not my damn hero. I know he ain't yours. <laughs> John Cena going against Jinder Mahal. At what is it, SummerSlam? That's what's coming up next. Yeah, yeah I'm really hoping for a, a clean finish because I I think that's going to be a great matchup. But I'm realistic. I know we're not going to get it. But yeah, Jinder was talking, and then Cena comes down, and he's like, you know, I know you probably only know my voice from uh, what was it, like elephant commer as the elephant from uh, pistachio commercials, but I'm John Cena. And I'm going to take your title. And then Jinder tried to run him down saying that you're just like everyone else. And he's like, no, actually, I think you're great. I like what you're doing. You worked hard. You're all like not roided out, but look like you're roided out. It's not what he said, but, you know, it's, it's what, what it's felt. what he said. I think that's what he felt, but yeah. And, uh, oh, so yeah. Hard. But, yeah, it ended the way, uh, it ended in a better way because I was just about to fast forward it because I just don't like to hear John Cena talk. It annoys me. Well, Daniel Bryan came out and was like, hold up. Shay McMahon and I make the matches. Y'all will make shit. Not you. So he said. we can't see you. Shinsuke Nakamura. And you will be going head to head. So, I mean, cool. I can dig it. That, that I'm actually tuning into. Now we're going to backtrack a bit. Just one match. And... Charlotte and Becky Lynch versus Tamina and Lana. Lana needs to just get off of wrestling and just be somebody's side chick. I just hate watching her. And me. you were the one sitting there saying, <sighs> oh, she's going she's gonna to win. Oh, that's before I actually thought. Because I, I thought that's the way it was going to go. I she was gonna told go you she could not final. wrestle. 
And it is just terrible, terrible, terrible. They're going to have to do something with that character to not lose her. And I am tired of looking at Superfly Jimmy Snooker's son um, do, oh, sorry, um, daughter, doing what... Uh, and the Usher bit was too far. And doing what uh, she does best with sitting there with that stank face. Uh, <laughs> again, Charlotte Becky Lynch, too awesome. Like, two very athletic women. Always going to look nice. But Becky Lynch keeps going for that damn arm bar. And it's just getting annoying at some point. Just go ahead and wrestle. Give me, give me a little razzle dazzle. Don't just go in for it all the time. Just give me a little razzle dazzle. You know, jump around. You know, kick somebody in the face. You know, that's not wrestling. Snatch actually. a booby out or something. That's definitely not wrestling. Well, I want to see more of that, and then a little bit more wrestling. Give me a little DET, but then do a little booby touch or a little booby slap. Something. Why don't you just no pay for HBO? So next up, we had Aiden English and Mike Canellis versus Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger. Oh, God. Let's just fast forward past Aiden English and Mike Canellis. Uh, I don't... I, I, I cannot stand Mike Canellis' stick. It's annoying as shite. Uh, the Miz 2.0 annoys every part of my bone body. Like, his whole entire stick is stupid. Um... Ty Dillinger, very athletic. Is that true what they said about him? They called him just a, uh, like he was a mediocre, like, like he was a medium wrestler. He yeah. doesn't have me anything. Then he said, no one, I'm going to up it and become a perfect 10. He did it. He did it. I would like to see him go further. I would like to see them do more with his character. I think that boy has more and more potential. Like he could actually be that guy in like the headline of WrestleMania. Like I see so much out of that guy. Well... Ty Dillinger, I think, is almost 40. Doesn't matter. He moves like a 25-year-old. He moves so, good. Yeah, but, I mean... He made it to the show, finally. Give him a shot. I think uh, he needs to... Because they're not going to put him in a prominent spot on SmackDown. They need to. I mean, Ric so, Flair did it, and he looked like a prune when he got in his little spanks. He needs to move to Raw uh, if there's going to be some way to develop him more because he's not getting any time. He needs to get He was on the time. pre-show on that for That's Battleground. Saying, like, you had him on a pre-show. No one really saw that. Like You need to have more of him. And then he lost. He's such a... like He actually puts that intensity behind wrestling. That's what I wanted to see. I mean, he, he outdid Sami Zayn, all of them. He, did, he outdid everybody in that match. It's fucking beautiful. But it was like ten seconds. It was like a ten minute long, not even ten minute long match. It was like three minutes of my life. But you know, he was great to watch. He was great to watch. I can't say anything bad about him. I mean, after that, you you head into uh, something happened to that I wanted to mention. Did something else happen? Oh, Rick! Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Why are you looking at me like, like I was about to start doing something? Did you hear me? I was about to sound like it was if you understood what the hell I'm talking about. All right, so... I was trying to remember what city they were in. <laughs> so, this actually was the one of the fun... Like, this was the best part of the night for me. And, then, no, actually, I can't say that. Chris Jericho coming back was the best part of the night. This is, like, the second best part of that whole entire SmackDown. Watching the New Day get the living shit beat out of them by two thugs. That was... Hands down, the best thug beatdown in wrestling I've ever seen. I think that's the only thug beatdown we've ever seen in wrestling. Nah, there was crime time. You missed that. I missed that here. Okay. But they beat the living sh- out of them like straight straight thugs in Air Force Ones. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. This is what y'all want? This is what y'all want, kid? Yeah. It was beautiful. It was freaking hilarious. Did you see Biggie just come out with half his little leaf tart out and his titty popped out? <laughs> his titty was just popped out. He's just running out there with his big ass. Uh, uh, and they just gave him two super kicks. It was done. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. When they took Kofi Kingston, they took his face and slammed it right into that side, and he just flew like a little rag doll. I laughed my head off. It was hysterical. Hysterical. So that actually just drug. Like, so Raw, it, like, not Raw. SmackDown was going down in my mind. It just went right back up, right at that point. It's beautiful. It was a ghetto ass beatdown. 
Uh, I didn't find it hysterical. I found it hilarious as shit. It's a little upset. It was not upsetting. Uh, Biggie's got a broken leg now. Biggie's damn titty. He got a real broken leg. Like seriously. I mean. Oh. <laughs> How you gonna break your toys, man? Anyway. Uh, they ain't toys. They're action figures. Damn it. The real nerds who call them action figures. <laughs> toys, man. Anyway, so you're a after, toy. After that, that's the comeback you got. That really? That that's the one. We lead into AJ, Kevin Owens, and Chris Jericho. So that match was actually a freaking phenomenal match. I enjoyed every part. This of it. was the match of the week, if we're including Sunday. This was uh, this was one of the best matches. And in Wednesday, a while. of this NXT was also. Great. Yeah, this, this was a was damn good match. Great. I mean, the lion salt that he was pulling now, even though he was you know forty pounds overweight. Uh, <laughs> not much. From, Kevin Owens got out. Dwarfed in that whole entire match by AJ Styles and uh, Chris Chris Jericho, but Kevin Owens kind of held his own in his ridiculous nose, and you know he pulled out his little tee hee 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 cannonball, cannonball guys. So he pulled out his little cannonball twice. We kind of knew that was probably going to happen. It usually always happens when you got you know that one move, you know whatever. But it I mean was, everybody. Has their signature. They have their signature. You but I'm gotta like, hit your signature but move. The one cannonball, two cannonball. I mean, I thought he was gonna. I knew he was gonna pull out once, but then you know when they have a triple threat, they gotta pull it out the same yeah, twice you know. or at the same time. Triple H, crap like that. Yeah, pedigree, pedigree. everyone. Stone Cold. Uh, Stunner, CM Punk. Go to sleep. There was this one point that I actually was like, "Damn, these boys." DeLorean. These AJ Styles is just yeah. that 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 beast. When um, they all kind of did their signatures at one point, so uh, he did the pay like kick. He did the pay. That was awesome. That was awesome. He pulled that out of nowhere. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to do a flip like that and come out with a kick. That shit is not easy at all. Not is. Go ahead and do it right now. Oh, I can do it. Go ahead and do it right now. See the soccer ball. The, this guy. He break his damn old ass back. Anyway, I didn't say I was gonna like be okay with doing it. I said <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. You can't do it. No, I can. You you, you want to you want to prove that? I, I played I put five on it. I played soccer. I could score a goal doing that. You, you didn't play soccer that well, bro. I mean, the family didn't want to tell you that, but it was like you were like that, you know, dwarf kid in the side, and you had, you know, wait, what? The, reason, the only reason the coach put you in was because that that daddy paid him off. Wait, what? I just want to let you know that real quick. No offense, bro. Uh, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, SmackDown was a whole entire better thing than Raw was. I'm gonna give that actually a Daniel Bryant. That was that was that was a good show. I kicked over my work phone. <laughs> That's what that loud ass crash was. I was gonna let it go, but he got a little, you know, got a little, got a little hurt. I mean, I had to tell him. Uh, Sorry, Daddy. Didn't want to tell him, but I had to tell him. Yeah, no, I give it to Daniel Bryan. Also, uh, so I'm going to say SmackDown won this week. If you've been keeping track, that's 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Raw won the week before. SmackDown wins this week. Good thing, because SmackDown needed this after that god-awful, battleground, depressing pay-per-view. Mm. The more they keep... TJ Perkins and the elf from uh, Lord of the Rings and Neville. Well, not Neville. I'm sorry. What's the other dude's name? Neville is banana? the guy you're talking about. Neville is that guy. I'm sorry. I mistook him for. What's the other idiot with the banana? He's gone, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, Austin Aries. Remember I told you? I was like, oh, Austin. shit. Austin Aries got. You got arrested? No, he got let go. You got let go? Why did he let go? Oh, crap. I guess well, like backstage problems or whatever. Well, Apparently, he was happy to leave, though. Oh wow! He didn't want to be in the cruiserweight division. Oh wow! Well, good, good, good to know. Yeah. I think it's better now that that whole entire spiel is done because I'm tired of looking at those three. So I mean, it was only on Raw. It wasn't like it was a. Uh... And then they were predominantly on uh, Smack or uh, Two Hundred Five Live, mm. which you don't watch. Mm. Nor do I. Nor does half the world. But apparently, it's getting better ratings. Wow. I noticed. Did I see well, that coming? No, I mean, like on the network, so that's not saying much. <laughs> no, it's not saying much. All right, so this is another Wooten Brother review. Uh, not seeing too many comments, so we're going to keep doing this until someone tells us to shut the hell up or just, you know, hey, love you. Is this, is this a new name, Wooten Brother Review? 
I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling. It. You don't feel it. You're not feeling it. You're not feeling it. We'll try it. No. I mean, I. You, I, you don't. You like? I it? made a logo. It says wrestling with my brother. This is another wrestling with my brother. Episode of SmackDown versus Raw. Oh, we started to show off, and I didn't even do the intro. Uh, well, you know we're already towards the end of the show, man. So. So outro. It's a little. Uh, I'm not at the outro point yet. Oh God! What else you got to say to people? Well, people, if you want to support us, you can support us on patreoncom backslash wrestling with my brother. You can also find us there on Facebook. Same thing. On Twitter, we are WWMB Podcast. You can check us out there, and uh, we are also on iTunes, SoundCloud. Oh, and we're also on YouTube, if you're listening to us, through audio, meaning you don't want to look at our faces. So you should probably come to the YouTube channels and look at our faces. Gotta warn you, I'm a sexy black man. Can I say black man? Yeah, I can say that. I mean, you didn't say nigga, so I guess that's fine. <laughs> you just went the extra mile on that one. I see what you did there. That's beautiful. As always, I'm your man. Naj, a.k.a. Pancake, a.k.a. What the pan? Hold up, hold up. No, no, no. What the fuck is... No. I can't use pancake. I'm gonna... I try to not cuss and say fuck on here, but what the (laughs) fuck pancake? I can't say pancake. What is that? Uh, That's just weird. I want you to explain it. I, I, I... No, sometimes when my wife calls me pancake because I like to flip a little flat. Okay, no more. Okay, okay. Uh, You said you wanted me to explain. I was gonna happily say it for you. A.K.A. the French Tickler, A.K.A. Mr. A.K.A. I'm disgusted, BG. (laughs) Catch y'all later.